Full frame versus APS-C, does it matter? Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So today I want to talk about sensor size. And does size matter? And no, I don't want to get into this big war. <laughs> this is not a, a warring video. You know, you get the APS-C guys that are fighting against the Micro Four Thirds and the full frame that are fighting against, no. We don't want that to happen. This is just purely a discussion, okay? I want to know what you guys use and why you use it. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts on it and just to give you my perspective on it. And I want to hear from you. So definitely in the comment area, I want to hear all of your thoughts, okay? And be nice about it, all right? Be nice about it. Anyways, before I get into it, I want you guys to head over to my website, jchristina.com. I make a lot of photography tools. I've invented some that are specific for photographers, just like you and I. Definitely go over there and check it out. If it's something that you like, go and pick something up. I would really appreciate your support. So let's get right into it. Sensor size. For me, I've always been a full frame proponent. Start out with the 1D, went into the 5Ds, the 5D Mark I, 5D Mark II, 5, on and on and on. Always full frame. Why is that? Okay, this is what I use, why? The reason I use full frame is because a lot of times I am in dark situations. Okay, I'm doing events, I'm covering hundreds and hundreds of people, I have to do it quickly. The lighting is horrendous. If any of you guys are wedding guys, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In these events, the lighting is just hit or miss, okay? You might have a spotlight and then all of a sudden you have just darkness and then you'll have a projector going and then you'll have yellow light. Everything is a hot mess. And noise is always a factor. The smaller the sensor is, the less light coming in, the less light hitting the sensor, the smaller the sensor, usually you end up with more noise. So that's why I use full frame, number one. Also, I use full frame because I love the depth of field, okay? So for portraits, I love the look of a full frame image, period, over APS-C. That's just what I like, I just like the look. Now, so what do I use my APS-C sensor cameras for? Well, for me, I have an 80D, I have 7D. Those cameras I use for my telephoto lenses. If I need extra reach, okay? Crop sensor is just awesome for that. I throw a 400 millimeter on there, I'm up to like 600 millimeters, and I could shoot like an owl at like 200 feet. It works out really well. Now, on a full frame, I would only be sitting at 400 millimeters compared to six, okay? So it works out really great in that situation. Also, my ADD is what I use for video because I just love the way it records, it tracks and whatnot. So it does a good job. Now, before I go any further, as you can see behind me, you can see a full frame APS-C as well as a micro four thirds sensor. And you can see the disparity, the massiveness on the full frame compared to an APS-C compared to a micro four thirds. I personally think that micro four thirds, don't get your panties in a bunch. I personally think that micro four thirds are going to go the way of the dinosaur. I've said this for some time and I really believe that to be the case. Now. If you are a Micro Four Thirds sensor shooter, don't get upset, okay? I just personally think that, why is that? I personally believe that APS-C is going to be the bottom, all right? And then we're gonna move forward from that. We're gonna do APS-C is gonna be consumer-based and then some pro also, and it's gonna go full frame and then medium format. Now, if we use Sony as guidance, guys, right? They've done APS-C, but they went straight into full frame with like, for example, their A7 line, okay? So full frame mirrorless was Sony's thing. And they've been doing it for years now. Now, Sony has been making medium format sensors for Hasselblad as well as Fujifilm, the GFX, for example, for quite some time. Just recently I saw that Sony is coming out with a 100 megapixel medium format sensor as well as a 150 megapixel sensor. That do 4K, guys. That's massive, <laughs> especially recording 4K, all right? Now, obviously they don't have a camera for that yet, but they're selling it. I personally think that 2018, we're going to see 
a medium format Sony. Maybe it's going to be called the A8, or maybe it's going to be called like maybe an A9 something. Maybe it'll be called an AX, you know, for an A10. I don't know. But I do believe that Sony is going to be coming out with a mirrorless medium format beast in the near future. So once we get that out there and it's going to be reasonably priced, we're not going to see a $30,000 Sony, as we see in the Hasselblad side, I guarantee you it'll probably be under 10 grand, maybe 8,000 or so. That is going to be massive, guys. That's going to be massive. So why am I looking at this? Well, recently I did a video, two or three videos ago, and I showed my contraption, my gear, what I use for doing my event photography. And it was 10 pounds, guys. It's a monster like bracket. It's got a 5D on it, a 24 to 70 L glass on it. It's got extra battery on it, as well as a battery pack, as well as a light at the top. Okay, I like flash center. Why is that? So if I'm shooting, for example, landscape, the light is in the middle. If I flip it and I'm shooting now portrait, the light is in the middle. Consistency, guys, very, very important for a professional. Sometimes with, especially with famous people, I will get 20 seconds with them. I'll get 30 seconds, maybe even less, all right? You need to be able to get it right. That's what makes a professional and you need to be able to do it quickly. So keeping the light in one spot is very important to me. That being said, recently I broke my toe and weight now has become an issue. Carrying this 10 pound thing and limping around is really not doing it for me. I have a big event coming up in March with like 700 and some people. I don't know if I want to carry this 10 pound with me at that time. Now, does that mean that I'm going to move from full frame to APS-C anytime soon? Probably not, but, but I am going to look at something. Just recently, I heard from a couple of my colleagues that they've tested out the Fujifilm X-T2 and they really like the results. And I just found that a couple of days ago, Fujifilm was coming out, in probably another couple of months, a X-H1 that's a little bit bigger, the body. I like something a little bit, has some girth to it. I have extremely big hands, so I like something that has a little bit of meat to it. But it is a APS-C sensor, and supposedly it's going to be awesome. So what I think I'm gonna do guys, possibly for March, is I'm gonna rent in a Fujifilm X-T2 with some good glass, and I'm going to give that to maybe my assistant to shoot APS-C during the event and see how the noise is, see how the focus is, see how it works, right? Maybe we'll swap off a little bit. So that's my idea. I wanna take a look at APS-C as maybe as an event camera and not having to go full frame for it. Things are getting better and better, and low light is getting better and better on APS-C sensors. So anyways, guys, I wanna hear from you. What are you using? Are you using APS-C? Are you using full frame? Do you use medium format like I do for fashion? What do you use, and why do you use it? Any feedback is always just loved, okay? I love this conversation that we have back and forth in the comment area, and I try to answer every comment personally. I think it's very important. So that's it, guys. This was a little bit of a rant, but I want your thoughts. I want to know what you guys think. So as always, if you enjoy the content, throw me a big thumbs up. That would be awesome. Slam that subscribe button so you can get all of my content when it becomes available. Once again, don't forget to head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find a lot of photography tools that I've invented for photographers just like you. And that's it. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. We'll see you in the next one. Happy shooting. See you soon.